Good morning and welcome to Ready, Set, Read, Research and Writing. I am Ms. Turner and today I am so glad that you are here with me. On today's episode, we will begin our new unit of study, the process of discovery and the development of inventions. Before we get started, make sure that you have your grade five week four distance learning or at home learning packet. Make sure you have a pen or a pencil. And finally, make sure you have some scratch paper. Can't wait to work with you today. Today we will explore our new topic on the process of discovery and inventions and learn vocabulary words that will help us when we read and write about the process of discovery and inventions. To begin our exploration of the process of discovery and inventions, let's think about a few questions we may have. One question I have is, what is an invention? And another question I have is, what is the process of discovery? Well, you'll see in your packet, it says that an invention is something made for the first time. For example, a hoverboard is an invention. It was created brand new. There had been nothing else like it. Another example of an invention is the iPhone 11. It's new because it's a new product, a new device that has three cameras instead of the original one that we're used to. Can you guys think of other event inventions? Good job. That was awesome. The discovery process is an action or actions taken to create or do something new. To begin our exploration of the process of discovery and inventions, let's first think about what we already know about inventions, the process of discovery, and what are some things that we want to learn about. Right now, you can take this time to write these things down. If you go to page four in your packet, you see that it has what I know about inventions, what I want to know, and what I wonder about inventions. Take some time to write down what you know, what you want to know, and what you wonder. After taking some time to think and writing down my notes, I wrote down that I know an invention is something made for the first time. And then some examples I wrote down were the hoverboard and the iPhone, because we just talked about those, so I know about those. This made me want to know what was the process of discovery like for each of those objects and for other objects? And then it made me wonder, how long does the process of discovery take? Does it take a long time? It also made me wonder, what starts the process of discovery? How do these inventors know what to invent? And then I thought to myself, and I wondered, who are some famous inventors? And were these inventors working on their own or did they have some partners? I don't know. Did you guys come up with any of the same questions that I did? Awesome, we can work together to find our answers. To begin to find answers to our questions, we're gonna watch a short Kid President video. Now, some of you may have already watched this uh, in your classrooms before we went on break. That's fine, enjoy it again at home. The video is called How to Be an Inventor. As you watch the video, pay close attention to what it takes to be an inventor. And what are some of the invention examples other than an iPhone 11 hoverboard or washing machine? Be sure to take notes on your paper from your distance learning packet on page seven. It says at the top from the Kid President video, what does it take to be an inventor? And what are some examples of great kid inventions? You should be supporting your answers either with details from the article included in the packet or with some details from the video that we see right now. I hope you enjoy the video. It's one of my favorites. According to the Kid President video, what does it take to be an inventor? And what are some examples of different inventions? That's right, good job. Um, I know some of the things that I saw and that my students and I discussed because we did watch this video before break was that it takes a lot of patience. It also takes teamwork and it takes seeing a problem and knowing that there needs to be something fixed. I love the inventions that Kid President mentioned at the beginning. He talked about how Peyton invented the retractable training wheels, which is awesome for people that are learning how to ride their bike without training wheels. He also talked about how somebody created a video system so that people could stay in touch with their pets while they're at work. My cousin uses one of those every day. and She's always able to check in on her dog to make sure that her dog is doing all right. And then we saw the hilarious example of Kid President and his cat -um cleaner. Now, he saw the problem and he attempted to fix it. He was unsuccessful, but now he knows he can go back and try again, which is where we see that quality of patience playing out. All right, 
I'm so excited because now we've built some background knowledge and we are ready to move into the next part of our topic. We've now taken some time to reflect on our topic. We've asked some questions, we thought about what we want to know and some things we wonder. So let's move on with our topic of invention and the process of discovery by now actually doing some research. To begin preparing to research our new topic, we must first become familiar with some new words associated with the process of discovery and inventions. I'm excited to introduce you to some words that we will need to know. For the vocabulary words, please go to page eight in your packet. Giving you some time to get there. Thanks for meeting me on page eight. Here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna say the vocabulary word and then you are going to repeat it at home. Then you're gonna mark how familiar you are with the word and then you're gonna write down the definition. The first word we're gonna see today is the word evacuate. Say the word evacuate. Great job. Next, we're not gonna do this for each one, but we will do it for the first one. You're gonna mark how familiar you are with this word. You're gonna write, I know this word and I use it regularly. I've heard this word, but I don't remember what it means, or I've never heard this word. Choose which one of those applies to you. The word evacuate means to remove air, water, or other contents from a container. Think about when you have a fire drill at school. We all evacuate the building, as in we are the contents leaving the container or the school. Today, we're gonna see this used in our, in our passage in paragraph four. I'm sorry, paragraph five. The next word that we have is execute. You should say the word execute. Great job. Now you should mark how familiar you are with this word. Awesome. We're all gonna have different levels of how familiar we are with words, so yours won't be the same as somebody else that may be watching. Finally, we're gonna talk about the meaning of the word execute or execution. The word execute means to carry out a plan. For example, if you say in the morning, I'm going to take a nap at 1.30 p.m. and then you take a nap, then you executed your plan or you followed through. You carried it out, you did what you said. Today, we're gonna to see the word execution uh, used in our passage to describe something that wasn't quite as simple as planning when to take your naps. The next word is inventor. You should say inventor. Great job. Now take a minute to mark how familiar you are with this word. Great. The word inventor is someone who invents. Remember, when we have that ending O-R, that always lets us know that it is a person who does that action at the beginning. Today, we're gonna be reading about one of the most famous and most celebrated inventors. The next word that we have is invention. You should say the word invention. Great job. I know we're all gonna mark, I know this word and I use it regularly because we've used it several times today. As we've already discussed, an invention is a new creation or something invented. We will be learning about a famous invention today. The final word that we will see is the word resistance. Say resistance. Great job. Go ahead and mark how familiar you are with this word. Awesome. The word resistance is the ability not to be affected by something. So think about when you're trying or imagine trying to move a wall. You push with all of your strength, but that wall does not move because that wall is able to not be affected or to resist your push. It gives you resistance. We will see this today as we learn about our famous invention. Please don't forget to look at the vocabulary box that shows you some images that might help you have a better understanding of each of these words. All right, we've done so much hard work today. Now we get to put all that hard work to the test as we dive into some research. Where might we find this research, you may ask? It's a great question. Please turn to page 14 in your packet. It should look something like this. When we get to page 14, we're gonna read the title of our passage, right here. 
I should hear you reading the title in three, two, one. Awesome job. You're right. This is called Edison's Light Bulb Turns 135 and is written by a member from the Smithsonian Museum System. We'll use this article this week to help us research about the invention of the light bulb and the discovery process. We'll read the text, clo the text closely and ask and answer questions about the text to better understand the process of discovery and our research. Our article is connected to our line of inquiry and especially this important question, which is how do inventions come from problems? And then how do they eventually positively impact society? As we read, you're gonna be thinking about our text focusing questions, which is how did Edison persevere to invent the light bulb according to the Smithsonian article? We will be working to answer this question by the end of the week. Before we read the article, let's take a close look at some of the text features. In just a second, I'm gonna meet you again in the Word document on page 14. All right, now that we're here together on page 14, we're gonna read about Edison's light bulb turns 135. But before we do so, let's take a look at some of the text features. First, we see the title, Edison's light bulb turns 135. That lets us know that this text is going to be about Edison's light bulb. As we scroll down, I notice right here that we have an image. Does anybody remember what this text next to it is called? What is the text that describes an image? Oh, I think I heard it from some of you out there. You're right. The text that describes an image is a caption. We're also looking at some other text features that we see. Right here, I see an illustration and it describes apparently the parts of the light bulb. Finally, I scroll down and I see another illustration, or not illustration, I'm sorry, image of the light bulb. These text features are helpful for me to understand what I'll be reading about as I go through the text. All right. Now we're gonna read the text together. Let's start with the title. Edison's light bulb turns 135. If time travel were possible and I could pick a moment I'd choose Menlo Park, New Jersey for my destination on New Year's Eve in 1879. As a historian of technology, I am fascinated when an inventor takes a simple, widely understood principle and through ingenuity and persistence creates a practical device. As a curator, I am constantly looking for technical objects that help me understand an inventor's process. Ooh, I love seeing that word process. That lets me know that it's about to let us know a little bit more about the process. Sometimes the two of these come together, as with Edison's light bulb. The knowledge that hot materials can produce useful light is as old as the discovery of a means to control fire. In the 19th century, several people considered how this might be done electrically in the home. But it was Thomas Edison who, after more than a year of experimentation, came up with a commercially viable solution, meaning it could be sold and spread widely. Being a promoter, as well as an inventor, he announced this achievement by lighting up his Menlo Park laboratory and adjacent buildings 135 years ago this evening. The world came to see, by carriage, by horseback, and by special trains from New York some 20 miles away. It was a fitting demonstration for the beginning of a new era. Ooh. Edison's light bulb was not a simple invention. The glowing element had to be strong and to glow without burning or breaking. It had to conduct electricity, yet it also had to have a high electrical resistance. This last condition was a critical factor that only Edison, among the early inventors, understood. With a high resistance, ooh, there's that vocabulary word, Heat would build up in the element instead of in the feed wires coming from the distant electric generator. After testing hundreds of materials, some of which are in our collections, he settled on a thin strip or filament of carbon. Because carbon would burn if exposed to air, it had to be enclosed in a glass bulb. This meant special procedures for blowing the bulb around the mounted filament and evacuating the air. Ooh, another vocabulary word. Small platinum clamps attach the filament to wires coming through the glass. 
When the glass bulb was mounted in a socket, these wires were connected through a switch to the main electrical supply. Thomas Edison used this carbon filament bulb in the first public demonstration of his most famous invention, the first practical electric incandescent lamp, which took place at his Menlo Park, New Jersey laboratory on New Year's Eve, 1879. All of this is apparent when you look carefully at the early light bulbs, including the glass tip at the top of the bulb, a remnant of a glass tube that led to a vacuum pump. One from that December 31st event is displayed in the museum's Lighting a Revolution exhibit. In the exhibition, a sequence of several bulbs show how Edison and his assistants continued to tinker with the invention. By 1881, he had a light bulb that you could screw into a socket today and turn on, all starting from a simple principle that was not so simple in execution. No wonder the light bulb has become the symbol of inventions. Awesome job with that reading. I appreciated each of you following along and all the hard work that you did before you read it on your own tomorrow. Thank you for being here with me today and embracing our new time of at-home learning. Uh, please keep working hard. Please keep reading every day and no matter what, know that your teachers miss you, they love you, and we can't wait to see you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you on Thursday.